Hello, hello everyone and happy Pesach, happy Passover. Uh, for those of you who are celebrating Passover, uh, if uh, you're doing Second Seder, I hope it's a good one. Uh, I'm going to be doing Second Seder at the Kol Ami Synagogue, which is right here in West Hollywood, uh, La Brea and Sunset. It's a nice reform uh, shul and uh, it ought to be a lot of fun. It's going to be all the familiar favorites, the kugel, you know, the matzo balls, all that good stuff. All right, so we're going to have a little bit of a conversation about where I think that the energy is going. And uh, for those people who like to have uh, the dates, it is uh, the 21st. It is a Saturday. All right, so the Mueller report has been released. And people have been upset about the fact that it was released during the uh, Holy Week or the week when uh, Easter and Passover begin. But energetically, when I go into the meditation, I don't think that this is a bad thing. It looks to me like the average person is going to digest the Mueller report for the next four days after it was released. It was released on a Thursday and I wrote down four days, which puts us at Monday, uh, which would be, I believe the 23rd. So what people say before they've read the Mueller, before they have read the Mueller report, before they have analyzed the Mueller report, because before they have fact checked the Mueller report what people say before they do all of that is is very different than what people are going to be saying on monday now the responses feel different to me the response from the democratic party is that whether they want to or not whether it's politically correct or not we're going to have to move towards impeachment hearings just because you know they have no choice. There's just too much evidence pointing to the fact that we, we have to start having hearings. So that is where it's headed. And I think that the American people, their opinion will shift more in support of that as they begin to absorb more facts from the Mueller report. So again, where people were at Thursday when they didn't have the information is going to be very different than where they're going to be Monday after they've had four days to digest the information. So we start, we'll start to see a turn. Also, the fact that it was delivered during the holiday means that people have time to contemplate their ethics, contemplate their spirituality, and sit back and read the Mueller report and fact check the Mueller report. So if you're a person of faith, if you're a GOP member, and if you're a, a person who fact checks, you're going to have a, a, a you're going to be you're going to have a hard Monday. You're going to come into a hard Monday. But I think that the Republicans are going to be viewing it very, very differently. And their questions are important questions. One of the uh, questions that the GOP is starting to ask is about Barack Obama and they're going to twist it that Barack Obama failed to protect the American people from an attack by Russia. So his administration uh, expect it to be attacked by the GOP as the GOP begins to uh, suspect they can't cover this up. It's so damning against the president, and this is the redacted version, that once everything comes out, people are gonna to wanna to blame somebody. And so part of the process of grief is that you become angry and you wanna blame somebody. And so inevitably, if you're a Republican, that person will be Barack Obama, that the feeling that he, he betrayed the country, that he failed to protect people, that he did not uh, handle uh, the security risk properly. In addition to blaming Obama, I anticipate that during the hearings, members of the intelligence agencies will also be subpoenaed and they will be asked very, very tough questions by the Republicans. The Republicans also want to know why did the intelligence agencies fail to protect the country from this type of attack? There's going to be a serious examination of the, of the intelligence agencies. How did we get hacked? Who inside the intelligence agencies coordinated with the Russians? And how was this allowed to happen? 
how did our intel how did we fail how did we fail so they are looking at it differently than attacking Donald Trump they're looking at it from the perspective of the fact that this is a security breach and they want to know how this security breach happened D different people uh, absorb grief and shock differently and that is just how I think the GOP will respond. I think that they're going to blame Obama and they're going to blame the intelligence agencies. Um, and I think that they're going to ask some, the intelligence agencies and Obama administration people some really, really tough questions. And I think it's legitimate. Um, I remember when I did a remote viewing a while back on Barack Obama and Michelle Obama and the fact that they both wrote biographies, autobiographies. And when I was meditating on Barack Obama and Michelle Obama, I heard Michelle Obama say uh, Barack Obama has post-traumatic presidency disorder. Uh, and she was actually, she was making a joke, but she was actually very serious that the presidency changed him and the decisions that he made during his presidency uh, haunt him because he, he does doubt that he made the right decisions, whether it was about how he handled Libya uh, how he handled Pakistan, and also the fact that I do think he feels some responsibility to Hillary Clinton and her campaign that he did not protect her the way that he feels that he should have. So there is, so it, there is this feeling when I when I meditate on Barack Obama that he really did feel that he was obligated to protect her and her campaign, but that he honestly didn't really know how to proceed and. He's a very cautious person, Barack Obama. He, he will sit back and monitor the situation. And he was being advised that they were supposed to sit back and monitor the situation so that they could find out who was communicating with who. Unfortunately, because they, they continued to monitor the situation but didn't adequately protect the American voter, that's going to be called into question in the future uh, hearings, I'm sorry to say. All right, so I just want to, oh, there's one more thing I want to say. Last night's meditation, when I was meditating on Nancy Pelosi and hearings coming up in the future, there seems to be some missing money that this is going to come out in the near future. There's money missing from, they're investigating missing money. Uh, whether it's from the Treasury or the budget, but money has gone missing and Pelosi is investigating missing money. It's just been taken it's, and they're trying to find it out. So that's another thing that's going to come out during the investigation. Uh, last, I had said that for whatever reason, Hope Hicks' testimony will be quite significant. The meeting at Trump Tower, the fact that she was there being told by the president how they could cover it up, etc. I think that that's going to be very, very uh, significant during the hearings. So that's everything I have for last night's remote. Okay, so I wanted to do something I haven't done yet, and that is to just look at the GOP's response, because that is more interesting to me. We all know how the Democrats are going to respond, but I want to see how Republicans who backed this president, how, how their energy is going to look over the next couple of weeks. The GOP response. I can't imagine. I just got to know. I just got to know. Let's take a look. All right, my good angels, my spirit guides. With your permission, I would like to access the Ashgabe records of the collective of the GOP. How will they be responding in the next few weeks to the Miller Report? Will they continue to back this president? Or will they do what I think they are going to do, which is withdraw from this president and start blaming the previous administration? Will the GOP respond to the Mueller report over the next few weeks?
the base card of the matter. They're going to be analyzing it. They're going to be tearing it to shreds. They're going to be looking for holes, anything that makes it questionable. They're going to be looking to punch holes in the Mueller report. That is, They are ripping through it, looking for any weaknesses. One's ethos, one ec uh, one's values, one's uh, view of the world is pushing in. So you have two things going on. Number one, is there any validity to this report? Are there any holes in this report? Is there any doubt about data collection? They will rip through this report to see if just if it can stand up to uh, scrutiny. But you can see this ethos question is coming in. How you look towards God or spirit, your relationship with God, your values. You know, does this president's behavior uh, reflect their values? Hanging it up. They're going to hang something up. What are they going to hang up? And rejoicing. Are they going to hang up the Mueller report or are they going to hang up this president? A judgment is coming. A judgment is coming regarding money, offerings, bribes possibly, large sums of money. This is where the investigation is heading and it's surprising to me that it's starting to become public this quickly. Negotiations and patience and the star is coming. Celebration. I get a feeling that there are large swaths of the Democratic Party and the Republican Party that are going to start coming together. I like this kind of energy moving in. It suggests that some type of cooperation is happening. First response when you realize when you're shocked and upset is to become angry, infuriated, horrified, lashed out, you don't know who to blame. So yes, the reality of this report is sinking in, and rightly so. Rightly so that the Republicans are going to want to rip through everything. I would rip through everything if I got a report from Ken Starr, <laughs> for example. I would want to know, if, is there any validity to this? That's what a smart person does. Hopes and fears. The final outcome for the GOP is devastation. What is around them, this case is moving forward with or without them. They can either be part of the impeachment hearing or not. Many people who trusted this president, who put their names and their reputations on the line for this president, are embarrassed, horrified, and heartbroken. They trusted this president. They put their own reputation on the line, whether you like them or not. And unfortunately, he's destroyed a lot of careers. Let's do a clarification. There's him. There's Trump. They're devastated and defensive. They will follow the money. I'm going to do something I don't usually do, which is a, a third clarification. We will work out some kind of an arrangement with the GOP. I see more working together between the two parties. More, negotiate, no, more negotiations, more uncovering of the dark money. But it's interesting. It's almost like the blue dog Republic, the blue dog Democrats, the moderate Democrats, the Democrats that the Republicans feel they can work with, like Klobuchar. The more moderate Democrats get together with the more moderate Republicans, and to get together, they push towards uh, a uh, investigation with the. Blue dog Dems and the blue and the uh, moderate Republicans seeming to all be pointing in the same direction, which is uh, impeachment and re resignation. So, in my original vision, which I had, God, it was over a year ago. Uh, the person that is going to be telling the president the truth about where the Senate is heading is Lindsey Graham, and. A couple a year or so ago when I got that vision I didn't really understand why it was Lindsey Graham that I saw I thought it would be Mitch McConnell but as this story is unfolding I think the reason it's not Mitch McConnell that will be having that conversation with the president is because Mitch McConnell no longer wants a relationship with this president 
Mitch McConnell is an interesting character. When I meditate on him, I see his eyes are on the courts. And when I try to pick up his energy in the meditative state, he says, it's all about the courts. It's all about the courts. It's all about the courts. He doesn't look at what's going on behind him. He's willing to make deals with anybody because he keeps his eye on the court. It reminds me of, I'm sorry to put it like this, prostitutes who keep their eyes on the money. They're willing to do anything and everything because they're keeping their eyes on the money. That kind of single-minded fixation on your goal allows you to do extremely unpleasant things. And unfortunately for Mitch McConnell, his eyes are on the courts. And it means that he's been willing to tolerate some pretty awful behavior in order to justify that. But uh, take heart, uh, we are moving towards impeachment hearings and a huge swath of the Republican Party really did trust this president and they're going to be doing a lot of soul searching for the next week or two. And I, I, in a way I think I'm glad it happened during Easter and Passover because this is a time of contemplation for people of faith and um, they will, they'll be off from work and they'll be able to spend that time reading this report. <laughs> All right, I want to thank everybody for watching this uh, quick video from Tarot with Whimsy. And uh, if you need to get in for an appointment, I do do phone con consultations, phone Tarot readings, uh, Tuesday to Saturday. So uh, that information is below. Thanks for supporting this channel, everybody. We're up to almost 8,000 subscriptions in three months, and I'm very grateful for uh, the support people have shown this channel. Next week, we're gonna be doing our giveaway. Uh, I don't think we've raised about $1,200, $1,300 for charity. Um, and uh, yeah, it'll be fun. We'll get to show what, what we did with the money we raised. All right, thanks for watching, everyone. We'll see you next time. Bye.